Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking for real estate investment trusts that could do very well if the currently overvalued stock market were to take a nosedive. Which REITs are best for long-term buy and hold investments? Now, one of the advantages of REITs in general is that REITs tend to pay decent dividends. And since real estate often does well when the stock market doesn't, or even if there's higher inflation, if inflation ends up dragging down the economy, many times real estate will continue to do fairly well. And REITs are a great way to invest in real estate and round out our investment portfolio. Okay, so let's jump right in. So our first REIT is Equity Residential, ticker symbol EQR. Right now, Equity Residential has a dividend yield of about 3%, and just so we all get an idea of how, how these REITs are valued in general, we're gonna use something called price to funds from operations. Price to funds from operations is sort of like price to earnings ratio, except for REITs. Funds from operations is a better metric to use with a REIT, and it's a better representation of how the company is doing than using price to earnings. So either way, with EQR, well, EQR currently has a price to FFO of about 26X. Now, since that probably doesn't mean a lot without a bit of context, well, I found about 250 REITs that trade in, Uni in the United States, and the average price to funds from operations was about 24X. So when we look at something like EQR, well, we might say this one looks slightly overvalued, although that might not be totally fair to say. We'd really want to do a deeper dive on this REIT if we want to truly understand what the fair value might be. But at least this gives us a starting point for now. Now, what Equity Residential does is they're one of the largest apartment building owners in the United States. So with rising home prices in many parts of the country, well, it's possible that apartments do fairly well over the next few years, which is why they made this list of REITs that could perform well because they could perform well even if the stock market were to crash. Well, residential properties are likely to be okay at least in the near term. And over the past year, this read is up about 37% on a total return basis. Total return assumes that we take any dividends that we receive and reinvest it back into the stock. Now, when we look over their dividend history, well, we can see that back in 2016, this REIT paid a special dividend. That happened after they sold some properties, therefore they had some extra cash, so they paid a special dividend. Now, since then, they've done a decent job of gradually ramping up the dividend which is a good sign for dividend investors. Okay, our next REIT is Crown Castle International, ticker symbol CCI. This REIT has a dividend yield of about 2.8%, and the price to funds from operation comes in at about 32X, so again, a bit on the high side, but there could be a good reason for that. So what Crown Castle does is that they own and operate cell towers and the infrastructure for, wi for wireless networks, for the wireless industry. So with 5G continuing to be rolled out, well, we can expect for a company like this to have a solid position in the market for, again, a few years. So if the stock market were to pull back, again, I would foresee this type of business to continue to do perfectly well. And when we look at their stock chart over the past year, well, we can see that Ground Castle is up about 15%, again, on a total return basis. And then when we switch over to their dividend history, well, we can see that they've done a decent job of gradually increasing their dividends. So overall, I think this is a good long-term buy and hold. Okay, now let's shift over to a REIT that provides data and network hosting facilities all around the world. This is Equinix, ticker symbol EQIX. And basically what Equinix does is they have more than 200 data centers, again, all around the globe. And basically what they do is they own this space, think things like server farms, and then they lease out that space to different companies. So clearly this is a good business for them to be in over the long run, which at least partially explains Thanks to their growth, that at least partially explains why their dividend yield is only about 1.5% at this point. And then we look at their price to funds from operations. Well, again, they're on the higher end at about 49x. So that could be too, bad, too high, but we might want to look deeper into that to see why it is priced that high. Because from a business perspective, they seem like quite a good business, or they seem to be in quite a good industry. And interestingly, their stock over the past year is up about 12%. And it looks like it is a bit volatile, which means that we might get an opportunity to in fact buy this one at a lower level. So again, this REIT might be worth a deeper dive, but at first glance, this looks like quite a good business. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but please let me know in the comments below which REIT you think we should do a deeper dive into first. Now, when we switch over to their dividend history, well, we can see that they didn't start paying a dividend until 2014. And then they paid a special dividend of almost $11 per share 
back in 2015. And since then, they've done a decent job of gradually, once again, gradually increasing their dividend, which I think is a very good sign for long-term investors. Okay, now we've got another real estate investment trust that could do fairly well in most economic scenarios. This REIT is called the Americold Realty Trust, ticker symbol COLD. And basically, what they do is they provide temperature-controlled food distribution services to many businesses. They have temperature-controlled warehouses and facilities throughout the world. So clearly, as long as companies need to ship food and keep them in a temperature-controlled environment, which is a lot of food, well, this REIT should do fairly well. Right now, they have a dividend yield of about 2.3%, but they do have a price to FFO of 61X. So clearly, this one's way on the high side, and this one's actually a good example of one that could be worth a deeper dive. Because if we were to consider their forward price to earnings ratio, price to FFO ratio, well, their forward price to FFO is just 31X. The only difference between a forward price to FFO and the one we've been using is the one we've been using looks at the past 12 months of funds from operations, where the forward one takes analyst projections. So there is a bit more question mark around using a forward number, but the only way that these numbers would be so far apart from each other is if funds from operations is expected to be significantly higher next year. So with that, you might discount the fact that it's trading at such a high multiple now because the growth could be factored into that. And then when we look at their stock price over the past year, well, over the past year, their total return is up about 10%. So not too bad. And then over on their dividend history here, well, once again, their dividend history has consistently moved higher in recent years, which is again, a good sign for most investors. Okay, now let's imagine that we don't wanna go ahead and pick an individual REIT like the four that we've looked at so far. Another option is to buy an ETF that owns a bunch of REITs in them. And the ETF that I think is very good is the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, ticker symbol VNQ. VNQ has a dividend yield of about 3% and a average price to funds from operations of about 38X, using funds from operations over the past year. And again, the advantage of using an ETF with a bunch of REITs in them is that this, re this ETF has all the REITs we've looked at so far, plus a whole bunch more. So again, if we're looking to diversify a bit, this could make a lot of sense. When we look at their stock price over the past year, well, VNQ is up about 29% on a total return basis, which is on the high end compared to some of our other companies. Now, some of our other REITs. Now, I was picking REITs that I think will do well if the stock market crashes, or even if there's just an economic pullback or inflation goes higher. I was looking for more safety-like REITs where they will be invested in a whole bunch of different ones. And then when we look at the dividend history, here I tried to go further back, we can see that it's not a clear trend higher. There is a bit of volatility with it, although I would say overall it has been uh, mostly higher, specifically after the financial crisis of 08 and 09. Now, I believe that one of the reasons for the volatility is I assume that they're paying out what they receive in dividends from all of their ETFs. So you're going to get, uh, from all of their REITs, so you're going to get a bit of, bit of volatility when you go to pay it out in turn to your customers as far as VNQ is concerned. So VNQ could be a great pick if we, if we wanna get involved in real estate but don't wanna go out of, the, out of our way to pick an individual REIT or pick an individual REIT industry or REIT sector. Now, if we feel like we don't completely understand REITs enough to even try to determine which ones are good or how to determine which ones are good, I actually did a REIT primer video where I covered the basics of investing in REITs. So if you're curious, perhaps that's a good next video for you to watch. I got a link right here, I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.